Hi, everyone. We're so happy to have you join us as we journey through the ruthless elimination of hurry. We will be journeying on Fridays at noon through the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Comer. I love this book. It's a simple concept, but it's not necessarily easy. It's quite countercultural and quite necessary, in my opinion, in these days. So we're super excited to journey with you. I want to make a couple of introductions. We have with us Miriam Shoemaker, Joy Whitman, and I'm Holly Smith. Fridays at noon, we'll be meeting on MeWe, on the MeWe platform. If you are not on MeWe, come on and join us. It's MeWe.com. The page is Today's Abundant Living with Holly Smith. If you're already here on MeWe, then you're in the right place. Just make sure to be here Fridays at noon. I'll also put a link below this video. If you're watching on YouTube, just look before the video, or if you're on um, looking at a post, just look at the comment section and I'll put a video there. And if you're on YouTube, please make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to ring that bell so you get notifications and join us Fridays at noon for the ruthless elimination of hurry. So ladies, why don't we jump in and start the discussion? Okay. This book, um, is about the ruthless elimination of hurry. And Miriam has a story to share with us about an experience that she had this week. Miriam, you want to share? Sure. In fact, I wrote it out because I knew I would miss some important little details and then it wouldn't be so funny. Um, God gave me a little practical lesson in the trap of being in a hurry yesterday. I wrote this out because I'll miss too much of it. I, as I've been reading this book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, I've been patting myself on the back a bit for not having gotten extremely sucked into the trap of hurry. But I have recognized that I get immediately sucked into that trap when I'm driving. I'm the one who speeds around you only to get stuck at the next light right in front of you. There is an extremely long light on my way to work. To prove my disgust at this light and its offensiveness, I timed it one time a minute and 15 seconds, too long. So to reduce its ability to catch me, I typically speed for the full mile before it to make the light. One day that will get me in trouble. I can be foiled though on the left turn that gets me onto that road about a mile before the long light. If the people in front of me don't risk their lives when there's a very small break in the traffic and they wait until it's safe to turn on, on the green arrow, I won't make that long light down the road. So yesterday, people were again driving in a safe manner on my way to work, and I knew I was going to miss getting through that long light. But I was prepared and turned off into the right turn lane when it turned red before I got there. So I could turn right on red and modify my route. It's just tricky in this area because the river goes where it wants to and the roads don't go where I want them to. So of course the guy in front of me was being prudent in his driving and waited until the arrow to turn right on red. I thought of a few choice words in my head about him. Thankfully, I do have filters and still did not make my, did not make my unhappiness known to him. So I proceeded on my way and began winding around the river roads. I got approximately three and a half miles, almost to where I wanted to be. And yep, there was a road closed sign. <laughs> yep, I had to retrace my three and a half miles back to that troublesome long light that got me into trouble in the first place. Instead of saving 30 seconds, I lost 15 minutes. I literally experienced the truth of the quote in this book, the ruthless elimination of hurry. When we hurry, we lose more than we gain. Mm -hmm. I funny. love it. That is funny because we, my husband and I are constantly kind of laughing at you because we as we see people that do that that like on the freeway and they fly past you just to get up and then here we are just slowly ended up passing them anyway <laughs> it, it just I, it, it never makes sense to us why do they go because they're not going to get their place and that's one thing we always taught our daughter never be in a hurry when you're driving yeah. Never be in a hurry when you're driving because you're always going to end up, you're going to end up being there anyway, and it's better to be there safe. <laughs> yeah. Right. I love it. And I love yeah. what you said. You were kind of patting yourself on the back. You felt like maybe you weren't <laughs> in this trap so much. And, and I, I 
you know, I probably found that as I read it too, I think, but then there would be parts that would hit and I'd go, oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, and, and parts of it were eye-opening for me, things I never even thought of. Um, we won't, I don't know if we'll get to that in our discussion today, but when he talks about clocks and the time before clocks, it never even occurred to me. Clocks have always been in our life. It just didn't right. even occur to me that there would be anything different than that and how that has affected our life. I found that really fascinating because it just never crossed my mind. We only know what we know. Yeah. And, and that's where we operate from. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing that got me um, with the, the title of this book really makes you think like, Miriam's story of hurry, of, of just doing things too fast. But it's, as I'm reading along, and, and even from the very first couple of chapters, I realize that it's it's not a book necessarily about hurry. Mm -hmm. It's it's filling your life. It, it's And he mentions here busyness. Um, mm -hmm. There's such a correlation, and I never, I never put the two together between hurry mm -hmm. and busyness. Um, and so it, it's becoming quite eye-opening. Um, you know, understanding the difference between the two, but the similarities between the two. Right. Yeah. Right. Agreed. And I like um, the, on the back, it says how to stay emotionally healthy and spiritually alive in the chaos of the modern world. Because we yeah. really do live, it is a chaotic world, um, but we have Christ. Yeah. But in this world, it takes a real purposeful effort. Right. It really does. And I think this book does a really good job of, of really hitting that. Um, I know I read this book and a little over a year ago, my husband, Jim and I were, um, we were supposed to take my mother to Florida for Christmas. She wasn't well enough. So it, it ended up happening in January. And on the car ride, I asked him, could I read? It was the second practice. Well, there are four practices that he mentions. It was the second practice. And we read it and we implemented it, the practice of Sabbath a little over a year ago. And when we get to that part, I'll tell you the story. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was definitely a God story. Um, it was definitely in the middle of chaos. But I really feel like it was um, like a lifesaver, a, a, a life preserve that the Lord um, gave to us at that time. It was a, a pretty out of control, crazy time in our life. And it was um, amazing to see the Lord's blessing in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just, I've personally experienced it and I'm still, I've read the book a few times and there's still so much more to it and so much more, um, there is just new each time. There's a lot, there's a lot in it. Simple, like I said before, a simple concept, but very countercultural. Um, yeah, yeah. but really that's how we're supposed to walk. And the more our culture kind of walks off a cliff, the more that's really a necessity. Well, and it's funny to talk about culture because even in John Ortberg's, um, forward here, it, you know, his last little pair, couple sentences is in these parents, in these pages lies the great invitation, take a deep breath, put your cell phone away, let your heart slow down, let God take care of the world. And that's what so many people I think forget mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Um, that it's it's not us trying to do things all the time. It's yeah. we sometimes we have to step back and let God take care of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. And the the forward the forward which is which is by John Ortberg which actually Joy you initially introduced me to John Ortberg I don't remember which book it was now but years ago. Um, you're the one who introduced me to him. And the, the forward itself is meaty and excellent. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, he said, hurry involves excessive haste or a state of urgency. He defined it as a state of frantic effort one falls into in response to inadequacy, fear, and guilt. The simple essence of hurry is too much to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So with the, in there correlates the busyness. Yes. You know, hurry with busyness, you know, being, yes. being too much to do, being too busy. Right. And the book doesn't talk about um, sitting around on the couch eating bonbons. No. I mean, you know, it, it's, it talks about being an apprentice of Jesus, which I love that terminology. And he talks about Jesus yeah. was busy, but never hurried. 
never hurried in, in apprenticing. Mm -hmm. So spoiler alert, it's really what the book talks about is apprenticing, you know, with Jesus right. um, and, and living that unhurried life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like this too. He said it was important not to be afraid of doing nothing. I think a lot of people, I know with what I do, I, I'm, I see more and more over the years, more and more um, stress, more and more anxiety. And I do think people, we've lived at such a fast pace, it's difficult to fall into quietness. It's difficult mm -hmm. to get into that space and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really in our culture that we should be busy and we should be going fast. We should be productive. We should be filling our lives. And as soon as maybe there's an activity that we're no longer involved in, instead of stepping back and using that for restful time, we fill it up right away because we have to be busy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I liked later in the book, it talks about um, advertisements and, and how things have changed, how they used to show if they wanted to sell a product, they showed people in leisure or people, but now they show, you know, first of all, commercials are very fast paced now and they show people um, multitasking and working hard and, and um, really multitasking. I, I, I used to be a real advocate and a uh, practicer of multitasking, but now I find really, it's just doing a lot of things partially attentive. <laughs> You're not really in any of them at, at the same right. time. Yeah. yeah. Sure. He, um, John Ortberg also in the um, introduction says to choose to live an unhurried life in our day is somewhat like taking a vow of poverty in earlier centuries. Mm. I think that's true. I mean, the, the thing when, when you meet somebody and they say this in the book too, you say, hi, how are you doing? The answer is usually busy. Yeah. Busy. Good. I'm busy. I'm busy. Right. Good. Yeah. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's almost, um, it's almost, you know, People look at you funny if you're, you know, what are you going to do tomorrow? I, you know, I don't have my day all full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it as it comes. And I go, what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, good. Just busy. <laughs> yeah. I, I liked too. He said, all my worst moments are when I'm in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I, I can say that for sure. Yeah, yeah, because you're not taking the time to really pay either one, pay attention to what you're doing, <laughs> or it's just you feel like you got to cram it all in together. I know um, when I quit working full time and was a stay home mom, and I still do it actually to this day, I, I still have a hard time. I felt like, you know, I typically hit, I, I worked a regular Monday through Friday and so all my housework would typically be done on the weekends because, you know, I had to catch up. I had to have, you know, do laundry and clean the house and blah, blah, blah. Well, when I quit to stay home, I mean, at the time, yeah, I had a baby, but um, so she took up a lot of my time, but I still, I felt like I, I got all this work done in a couple of days in Monday and Tuesday in the week, all the housework. And then the rest of the week I had nothing to do. So Kevin had to remind me, you're home now. You can spread it out. <laughs> so you, you just, you feel like something's wrong if you're not, I, and again, I said, I, I still do that. I feel like if I'm not doing something all day long, I, something's wrong and I'm getting better at it, but it's hard. It's a hard shift. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is very countercultural. Yeah. It really yeah. is. I have always been busy and I don't want to be busy for the sake of busy. And I don't want, Jim and I have found that the descriptor that people tend to use for us is they're busy. It's not what we want our legacy to be. Right. Mm -hmm. They're busy. Um, and we have been very purposeful about working to gear that back over the years. The last three and a half years, 
my mom's health was failing. Mom passed last November. Um, and then within five days after she passed, my sister Lauren had to start um, chemotherapy. So I was flying back and forth to be with her in Florida. Um, so three and a half years were mom's health got, um, it, it declined and, and it really wasn't, she wanted to live home and be independent. And honestly, she wasn't able. And I kept saying it wasn't sustainable yet. I kept doing it. I mean, it wasn't sustainable. It was by God's grace. Um, but you know, she could, couldn't got to where she couldn't get up, couldn't get up out of the bed to get to the bathroom, couldn't get out. I mean, that's really not independent. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, you know, it's, it's like, it was a slow progressive thing. And so, you know, it got to place. I remember her, her house is seven minutes from ours and I would get in the car and I would get called, you know, four in the morning. I, I can't get up. I have to go to the bathroom and I have to rush. And I would get in the car and I would say, all right, you have seven minutes just breathe. You know, you have seven minutes. You can't get there any faster. If Miriam had been driving, maybe I could. <laughs> but, you know, it's a slower. Seven, or slower. Yeah. It's a seven minute drive. And ironically, I had one of those lights too. If you hammered it, you could make it through. But I, seven minute drive. And um, I would just, you know, try to take that time to breathe. And now that mom has passed and Lauren is, Praise God, doing well. She's made it through her treatments. I've been home now for two months. And I'm finding that um, there's still a, a, an engine running inside of me at high gear. At high gear. I have, right now, Jim is actually in Florida and I'm taking this week and being still. And I've always enjoyed being still. Even though I've been busy, I've also uh, been able to really gear back and be able to be very purposeful about quiet time. And I'm having quiet time this week and it's good for me, but it is um, a bit foreign mm -hmm. and it's a struggle. There's some struggle in it for me. So I'm, I'm sitting in it and, and allowing the struggle to take place. But, you know, it's a strange feeling to have the, the necessity gone, but the uh, habit still fully intact. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's coming, you know, it's getting better, but it's taking a real purposeful effort. Okay. And the title of the book really lends itself to that. It's not just about eliminating hurry, but you have to be ruthless about it. Right. Yes. You have to counteract those longstanding habits and thinking and um, just kind of constantly when something comes up, you don't have to say yes. I, I like to stop. Ta Holly, you've taught me this. It's to stop and say, let me pray on that. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> Um, yeah. to see whether it's really something I should be involved in or if it's going to take all of my um, extra reserve time so that I have no reserve left. Right. Yeah. Right. They touch on margin in this book, which I like. And there's a book, um, and I hope I can remember the author. It's the book, the title of the book is Margin. Um, I'll have to pull it out at some point. It's it's not a brand new book, but a really good book. And I like I like that margin. You know, we think about margin is the space on a paper, you know, in which we don't write. And we really do need margin in our life. And I think people will ask us to do things or things will come to us. And I think, you know, once once we've been walking with the Lord for a while, we're not really, hopefully, at a place where we're tricking between bad things and good things. Usually it's lots of wonderful things. Yeah. But, you know, I like in the book how it says, you know, every yes is a thousand no's. So okay. you just, you can't, you can't yeah. do it all. And so I, I like that, you know, making sure that there's margin. And I was living very marginless that, you know, three and a half years and I knew it. I just, I didn't know what else to do. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's a habit and it, and it doesn't, you know, I'll get I don't like to, um, but, you know, it builds neural pathways in our brain. And it takes a while to reroute those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, it really does. Yeah. Is the margin book you're talking about by Richard Swenson? Yes. Okay. Love that book. Love that. I should know it. It's one of my recommended reading books yeah. in the Conscious Eating Program, but I can't remember <laughs> the author. Great book. I love that book. Yeah. Really, really good it. book. Yeah. I read it too. You recommended it, and it was wonderful. It is real good book. Yeah. Yeah, real good book. 
So, but yeah, having margin, it's key. And, and people would, um, I remember back when I had a, a, a paper day planner and I would open it, you know, on your phone, uh, electronic calendar, it's a lot easier just for you to see it, not everybody else. But I would remember I would open that calendar up and if somebody, you know, can you do this? They'd see a blank space. Oh, you can do that. Uh, no, <laughs> no, not necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they have the time spot open doesn't mean it's <laughs> yeah or those people that say what are you doing on such and such a date as if they can determine whether or not if i say nothing then they can determine that i should do something for them yes. <laughs> or with them and it's like um can i decide why are you asking that's what i do i've gotten into the habit of asking why are you asking <laughs> yeah i do too yeah i do too yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a leading question. <laughs> Why are you asking? Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. Right. I have, since COVID, um, a lot of people have shifted where they work. And when I would go into the doctor's office to work, people would think I was at work. Well, now Jim and I are both working from home and people seem to think he's at work, but they don't seem to think I'm at work. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I'll get that sometimes too. What are you doing? Working? Are you home? I am. Oh. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd think now within the last couple of years, that's not really a, a it's kind of commonplace anymore that, you know, you shouldn't necessarily just assume just because you're home, you're not working. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah, true. Absolutely. Okay. Well, this has been a great discussion. I don't know if you have anything more on this. Um, just the introduction was good all by itself. Do you, either of you have anything more? to add on just the introduction itself? No. All right, well, this is what we're gonna be doing. Fridays at noon, we'd love to have you join us. We're just gonna journey through the book. It's an excellent book. Come on, noon, be with us, journey through. You might wanna pick up a copy. I'll put a link underneath the video. It's an excellent book if you wanna read along or if you just wanna journey with us and hear us walk through it. But it's an exciting book. It's um, a little intimidating in a wonderful way and very, very needed. I really believe it will bless your socks off. So come on and join us Fridays at noon on MeWe.com at Today's Abundant Living with Holly Smith and journey with Miriam and Joy and me as we make the ruthless elimination of hurry along with you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.